<clears throat> Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our October users webinar. October's almost over, hard to believe. We're glad you're sharing your time with us today. Chuck's going to be covering the billing and invoicing processes in Student Manager. I have seen his slide deck, so I know he's going to cover a lot of ground, and we're going to get right to it. And while he's giving his session, please put your questions and comments in the chat box, and I will be keeping an eye on that, and Matthew's here to help with that as well. Together, we'll get your questions answered or to Chuck. And do remember at the end of the session today to take just a few seconds to respond to the short survey that we have. So, Chuck, are you ready to walk us through billing and invoicing? Walk, no, run, run, run yes. <laughs> run us through. Run it's all us, yours. Very good. Well, thanks, everybody, for coming out on a Thursday afternoon. I hope, though, fall is off to a good start. I can't believe it is uh, thanks, uh, Thanksgiving is almost here, but... Uh, uh, Halloween is in a couple of days. So, uh, well, Halloween might be scary, but for some of you, the scary one of the scary parts is keeping track of the money and tracking down people that owe you money. And that is what we're about today. Company invoicing or invoicing and billing or follow the money. So um, I'm going to give us uh, what we're going to cover today. Um, again, a bit on billing basics. Uh, we'll cover payment plans, uh, what billing records, or the billing, uh, billing only registration uh, record, uh, creating invoices, paying invoices, and then running some of your basic reports. And before we get started, I, I know the answer to this for some of you, but I'd like to do a show of hands. How many of you have actually gone in and created billings and invoices uh, and have done that kind of, I guess you know it in your daily work. In other words, who are the pros out there? All right, we've got Tracy, Nicole, yeah, we've got a few. All right, all right, so we've got a, a pretty good set of those. I'm going to ask you to put your hands down. I'm gonna smack them down. And let's do the, uh, the, ob the obtuse, the reverse. How many of you have never really gone in and used the billing and invoicing module before? Raise your hand if you really are pretty much brand new to this. All right, so we've got we've got a couple in there. I assume the rest of you are uh, in the middle. And, and and Nicole says she's not a pro, but she can do them. Well, that that counts. That counts. So, uh, all right, moving on. So, and we'll get back to this. Here we go. Why do you use company invoicing? Well, the one thing is if because if you want to get paid and you want to allow people to pay later. Uh, so we, that's kind of the, the, the big one. Um, one of the things that is a benefit of company invoicing is that if you've got uh, a number of registrations that you're going to be billing to the same entity for one course, multiple courses, uh, the, using the company billing invoicing allows you to consolidate those, which is really a benefit for the company as well. They only have to make one payment for five or six people rather than having to pay five or six individual payments of 100 bucks or to do their own grouping on their end. Um, one of the other benefits on uh, doing the company invoicing is that you don't need to create registrations at the same time or group them together in order to create a group bill or a group invoice for all of those registrations. Uh, <clears throat> I guess the other is kind of normal. It, it runs invoices. It, it identifies invoices when they are due to be uh, billed out, takes care of the invoice numbers, so it tags them with a the unique number. Um, and you have options now when you're running invoices. Uh, you can choose, you may choose, you can choose to run them by an individual course for a single payer. Um, by a date range, or even by a coordinator. In other words, a staff member who is running the programs. And then certainly the other is that you can reprint invoices. And then I guess the other would be that you can do aging. Uh, you can do aging of the outstanding payments. Um, of continuing on that, making a full or a partial payment to an invoice. <clears throat> if you're making a partial payment, you have the ability to choose how you want to distribute that. 
and there's again is our is our aging option. You can you can look at your status of how many people are owing money or that, <clears throat> that are deadbeats, if you would, that you need to go after. So uh, before we start with the invoicing, let's kind of review the preferences. Um, and again, um, this is on your preferences area under pay. Um, one of the things I will note is that this uh, new design of the preferences Matthew put together, and I was thinking in like um, two or three, well, it's been several builds ago, probably the middle of summer, last summer or the, toward the end of last summer, <clears throat> uh, a year ago that he consolidated all of the settings for invoice into one nice little area. So what are the things that you need to do? One, uh, there is, it references the invoice starting number. So you know what is the seed number for sequencing of invoices. And if you're required to set a number by your business office, uh, we can actually help you set that number to match a business office um, set of numbers. <clears throat> the question about what is the default billing date, uh, depending on your clientele and how you want to set that up, uh, you can either choose, again, any of those five options there. Uh, the date that the billing was done, which most people do, uh, the date of the beginning date of the course, uh, the ending date of the course, a hard specific date, or some custom date. Uh, that, that you could actually program to, to be a certain date, the 15th of every month or something. So again, whoops, let's get back to that. Uh, here we go, skipping around. Uh, assigning invoice number at billing screen, and, and that is a preference uh, for those of you doing billings. If most of your invoices are to a single firm for a single registration or a single pair, you know, a small group of registrations, uh, you may want to choose the assign invoice number at billing screen. Uh, however, if you are doing cases where you might have several people coming in over a period of time that are all going to be billed to the same company, you would probably not have that turned on as a default. Um, and again, if you've got questions about that, uh, feel free to pop them up and we'll cover them in the Q&A. Um, do you wanna set the payment amount of, oh, I keep moving my mouse, here we go. Set the payment amount for new billings to account for existing billings. And that basically, if you've got a, if you've got an amount due of $1,000 and you have a $50 billing on record, uh, it lets you, it, it tells the system to say, well, account for that $50 bill and so that the balance due on the next new invoice would be 950, not the full $1,000. And again, um, I would probably recommend that most of you have that turned on. And then finally, don't change invoice date when running invoices. Um, again, if you'll remember the, I keep going, yeah, keep your fingers off the mouse. Um, the blue is global settings and the black is a local setting. Uh, but the idea that when you're running invoices, we'll talk about the date on the invoice. Uh, when you're running invoices, you can choose to have the actual date that the invoice was printed show up on the invoice versus keeping the original invoice date when you created the billing uh, or the billing date when you created the original billing. All right, so setup. So let's go next. Ch creating the billing payment. Well, an invoice starts with a payment screen because a invoice or billing, if you would, is a part of the pay table. So you have the pay screen, uh, you basically would create the screen, typically the dollar amount of the billing will show up based on the balance due. You'd set the payment type to billing. You would, uh, if you want to change a billing date, you could do that by default, the billing date is the date that this payment uh, slash billing was created. <clears throat> You'll also note that it'll say uninvoiced billing on the record. Then you would indicate who is paying. Well, and again, by default, 
And then if you have a PO number from the company, uh, you would put that in the PO box. Uh, and again, the invoice number, the invoice number is blank until it's assigned an invoice. And we'll talk about this later as to how that is how student manager differentiates between a invoiced billing and an uninvoiced billing is whether or not it has an invoice number. Okay, setting the payer. Well, one of the things to remember or that is a default of the system is that if the student is associated with a firm, the default name in the billing is the firm. Uh, you can change that by obviously going over to your settings, uh, your, your specialty area here and clicking either bill to individual or if you want to bill it to a third party firm, you might have a um, labor, uh, a, a economic development agency that's picking up the tab for certain, for certain courses. <clears throat> if you enter that agency as a firm, you can find that firm in your firm table, automatically drop in the billing information. Or for that matter, a third party name. If Big Daddy Warbucks, uh, Sugar Daddy is going to be picking up the bill for that for a student, you can look up that person and add that as who the person is paying. Note, again, if you're wanting to do billings and have them all grouped together into the same invoice when you run invoices, the three things that must match are PO number, payer name, and the attention line. <clears throat> so again, the example here, if you had ASWR systems, comma, ink, period, and you just had ASWR systems or just plain ASWR, those two billings would be considered different from the standpoint of who's paying for them and you'd end up with two invoices with different numbers, both to ASWR systems, but you'll, the, the company names would not have been act, uh, the same. Payment plans, um, kind of curious, uh, raise your hands if you have used payment plans. If you do billing and you do payment plans, raise your hand. <clears throat> and we've got a few. Um, well, the benefit of a payment plan, or what, what basically by offering the students the option of a payment plan, it lets them choose to split that payment over a series of months or a series of time frames. And again, typically if you have high dollar courses <clears throat> and you have students maybe paying for them themselves, uh, that is a really nice convenience. Um, again, the note on that is that payment plans are only available for a single individual registration. Uh, if you have a group registration, you can't create a payment plan. So how do you do it? Well, you set up the billing payment type, so you create the type of payment as a billing, enter in the information as to who's gonna be paying the bill, and then click on the payment plan button. That'll bring up a, um, menu of asking how many installments you would like to create. <clears throat> I think the default is the, just the number three, kind of an arbitrary number. Uh, and then once you have uh, indicated the number and hit OK, it'll give you a form to confirm the dates and the dollar amounts of these billings. <clears throat> so again, the default is to set it if we had, again, $1,000 for payments and you started it on the 14th of September, it would default every 30 days. It would make a new invoice date and it would divide the dollar amount due by four, which comes up with a nice even amount right here. Now, one of the things to note is that if you have an odd amount, uh, $900 and you're going to divide it into three parts or $1,000 and you're gonna divide it into three parts, uh, three payments. Uh, Aceware will do the math. Come back here. Aceware will do the math uh, and you can actually edit those numbers so that if you wanted a round number, again, 333, 333, 334, rather than going with 333.33, 333, you get the gist. So you can edit those numbers so that they come up with whole numbers on fractional or on a non-divisible, evenly divisible um, amount. 
Now, one of the things to note is that and we'll talk about this like we're doing distribution of payments. The system will not let you click OK when you're creating these numbers until you actually put in the same number of dollars that is listed in the amount due of that particular billing. So it does have a, uh, a double check for accuracy or making sure you, you have the right number of dollars going out on a billing. Billing record, okay, so this is, uh, now we're kind of moving over to another option within the billing and invoicing, and it really is not, well, you can use it with billing and invoicing, you can do it with payments, but the idea is of a billing registration or a billing only registration. And what happens is that uh, when you turn the preference on, we're gonna get into this, uh, once you turn on the preference under registrations, which says use, bill, pay, registration type. When you turn that on and you go now into registrations, there is a little billing record uh, checkbox. And when you check it, it will just pop up a message, billing record. Well, what does that do? Uh, you, typically you'd use it when you're having a contract course and you have one person with the company who is going to be picking up the tab or getting the invoice for this contract course and may or may not be an actual attendee. Well, actually would not be an attendee, but you need to have their name connected to the course to get a invoice for them. The, again, as noted, you have to have that preference turned on it puts that checkbox on the registration screen, and when you check it, it is set as a billing record. Now, what does that do? What it does now is it turns that registration into a Trojan horse registration. It's not a, quote, real registration. It'll typically ask you, and you typically will, clear the hours, credits, and grades so there is no uh, quantitative element to that registration. Uh, billing records are by default excluded from enrollment counts so that that person who is in the course only for the purpose of getting a bill sent to them, their name won't appear on rosters, they won't appear on attendance lists, and they won't appear in the count for official purposes. Um, and again, billing records aren't included in courses taken. If you have a, a name whose registration has got a billing record on and they've actually taken real registrations. Uh, when you look at the courses taken on the name record, any billing only registrations aren't included in that because all they're there for is picking up the tab. They're not really taking the class. Um, and when you're talking about reports, most billing records are not, well, pretty much in all report areas, billing records are as a default not included. And in many of those, there is an option to say include billing, uh, but that by default is usually off. All right, how are we doing? Sharon, questions? You guys got questions out there? You're doing fine, carry on. All righty, keeping on a rocket. Billing record registration. So again, uh, how does that work? We talked about enabling the bill record pay type, add the billing record on the screen, choosing the options about clearing these out, and if you have attendance, clearing out attendance. And then once you save that registration, you're able to set up the billing invoice for that record. Kind of a recap of what we did. So when you have a billing record uh, on file, and we're looking at a student roster. Uh, it'll mark that student as payor. It'll drop them below the regular list of names or registrations, and it does not count them as an enrollment type. Uh, on a course is taken, this is if we're looking at Sharon's name record now, um, a billing only registration, a payor registration is listed in the list, but it is marked as a payor and it is not counted in the courses taken. ACE web billings. Now this is what we're talking about for students coming in through ACE web and being able to bill. <clears throat> when you set up a class, 
in the ACE Web published properties, if you have the option on a class by class basis to allow billing, and you'll see the four different ways that you can make that possible. Um, when that is done and the student goes to checkout, they'll have the student will see an option to say credit card or invoice or invoice me. And when they do that, then uh, they're able to actually check out, register for that class, get a registration confirmation. It, it won't be a receipt. It'll just be a confirmation they're enrolled for that class. Now, one of the other things about billing that is a relatively new element is the ability for you to go into a person record. And this is under uh, the name record under demographics. There is something called AW bill amount. And what this allows that student to do is that if they, if you basically are giving this student a special pass to say, hey, Chuck, I trust you with a bill of up to $1,000. And even if the course doesn't say, allow an invoice option, I'm going to give you the permission to do that. So again, that is something that may have application to what you're doing. <clears throat> and again, as noted, this is a fairly new option. And uh, again, um, I would, uh, it, I would, again, it depends on your situation, how you might use it. Show of hands again, guys. How many of you have used the, um, the billing uh, or the billing amount for the student to allow a student to do billing, even though a course might not be set up for that. Anybody? Boy, I'm not seeing any hands go up. So, all right. Well, um, it's there if there's a circumstance where that might be useful. So, um, all right, let's go on. Creating invoices. Okay. We have generated billings. Uh, we've be able. We've assigned a billing to a student. They say, "We bill me for this amount." So now we are ready to actually create the invoices. <clears throat> and you do that by going to Reports, Invoices, Run Invoices. What do you do? Okay, number one. Number one, you have to make sure the Print New Invoices box is checked. Number two, you can choose if you're dealing with a, um, when you're printing invoices, uh, you can choose the order in which the invoices come out of the printer or the sequence of invoices. Uh, within the invoice itself, you have options of how do you want the individual listings of the student in the course to be displayed. Then you have the option to scope invoices. Generally, by default, what's going to happen is that student manager will put in today's date. <clears throat> this was, uh, this deck was created on the 21st of September. And so when Cheryl was running the demo to run this report, it put in that date <clears throat> and using that criteria, when she would have, have hit okay, it would have pulled all billings that had not had an invoice number put on um, that were dated with the pay date on or before the 21st of September. But as you note, this does give the option to run invoices just for a single class or invoices for a single payer, or again, invoices just for a coordinator. And as you also note here, there is an option to be able to email those invoices. If you capture the, the, the billing person's or company's mailing address, email address, you can email those in a batch email. And then again, if you have different report formats of how you want this to go, you can choose that report format. Now, uh, there is a um, switch, uh, kind of like the uh, system locked when you're doing uh, 
re-indexing or you're doing uh, packing and re when you're doing backups, that it turns on a switch called invoice halt whenever somebody is running invoices. And the reason for that is so you don't have two people at the same time try to run invoices and they end up with duplicate invoice numbers. <clears throat> so again, uh, there is a invoice halt that turns on. You may have found if you run invoices that if you crash the invoice report routine, uh, you'll get a message that invoice invoices are locked. Uh, there is a method to turn that off or to reset that, uh, I believe, under the financial setting on your um, in your student manager tools um, menu. All right, I don't see any questions. Um, creating invoices. Okay, so how does this work? It will create an invoice if it finds a billing record in the system. If the billing date, the billing date is on or before the system date, or we'll go back, or whatever date, if you wanted to run invoices, say you're going to be gone, uh, like I'm going to be gone tomorrow, and I want to run invoices through Friday, I would actually put in here 10-30-2020, uh, and then when I run invoices, um, it would run any invoice where the billing date is up to 10-30-2020. And then finally, that the invoice number is empty. In other words, we don't reassign invoices that have already been assigned. All right, the basic process of invoices. So again, how, do, how does it group the invoices together into a single payer? Well, obviously the payer name must be exactly the same. And if there's a PO number, it must match. And if there is an attention value, it must match. And again, the benefit of that is that that allows you to have different departments within the same billing entity. So the idea here, these two billings would show up on different invoices because they're to different departments within the same company. So again, that's a the PO number must match, payer name must match, and the attention value must match. And again, so that allows you, and like in this previous example here, uh, whoa, it allows you to, it would let you have two different invoices for these two St. Joseph Health Center bills because they're going to be paid for by different departments within that agency. All right. Uh, I think we're doing good. Sample invoice. Here is uh, an, a typical invoice. Obviously, if you wanted to put in a logo on that, you wanted to put in a graphic image on that, you certainly can do that. Um, and again, uh, so because we're doing an invoice that would have included all billings that were done on or prior to the 21st that hadn't been billed yet, so you might have different dates of uh, students coming in to classes, and those will all be pulled together into this invoice. Again, if the firm name, the purchase order number, if there is one, and the attention name, if there is one, would match up. So there's the attention. This would only be for the world headquarters registrations or billings that are assigned to A-Source systems. Uh, proposed invoice number. Now, once you have run the, uh, if you would, pro forma set of invoices based on your criteria, uh, it'll ask you, did the invoices print successfully? Is it okay to assign invoice numbers now? Now, again, if you typically preview those to screen and you skip through those and kind of eyeball them for accuracy, um, you would not answer yes until you kind of previewed it to make sure you didn't screw up that, oh my gosh, ASOR Systems, I know there are more billings than the two that are showing for Chuck Havlicek, what's going on? So you'd say no and then uh, go back and correct your, uh, or chase down what might be the problem and then rerun and then rerun the uh, invoicing report. Uh, so again, now just to note, if you're doing this and you've got other people, of course, working in the system, 
Uh, if you go back later, correct it, and rerun it again, someone else may have run some other invoices while you were doing your corrections, and that invoice number might be a different sequence. So don't, you know, don't get freaked out that the last beginning number was 121 and now this is 122. Um, again, in a multi-user system, someone else might have gone in and, and done some work. Okay, we are cranking through here. Reprinting an invoice. Uh, to reprint an invoice, what you would do is go back through the run invoices routine, only you would check, you would uncheck the print new invoices box and then click OK. And when you do that, it'll actually bring up the query manager where you could go in, run a query then to select an individual invoice or a, a group of invoices that you wanted to reprint. Um, other ways to reprint, which we'll cover, but one of the things to note here is that only when you're doing queries on invoices, reprinting invoices, pretty much only the fields from the payment record are available. And typically the key fields on that that you're looking for is generally the invoice number, perhaps, oh, come on, perhaps the payer name or the course number. But again, probably the bulk of the time you're gonna be actually drilling that into an individual invoice number. All right, any questions? How are we doing out there? You're doing good. Doing good. Doing good. Doing good. Doing good. All right. Reinvigorating an invoice. And now this again is, is a lovely name. Matthew's, this is Matthew's jewel here. <clears throat> again, uh, as with other payments records in Student Manager, once you have saved a record, you cannot edit the amount paid. Now, but sometimes on a billing, if you've created a billing and two minutes later you get a call from the company saying, hey, Chuck can't go, uh, cancel him out of that uh, set of registrations we sent you yesterday and said that we were all done, no, we're, we're good. So, you, say, ah, gee, you know, what are we going to do on this? Well, that is the purpose of the reinvigorate option. So again, uh, what it allows you to do is void the existing billing record and create a new one with the correct amount, but the same date and the same invoice number. So again, uh, when you're setting on a invoice um, that would have already been invoiced out, the reinvigorate invoice button should be live. You click on it, it'll give you a reason. It'll, it'll ask for a reason, just like the reason for perhaps a uh, <clears throat> canceling a course or the reason for uh, giving a refund. Uh, why are you doing this? Uh, wrong amount. You said, uh, you said uh, uh, triple thumbs or can't type, whatever. Uh, and then you put in the new amount. So again, it's basically avoid and reissue without having to retype the data elements on the new invoice. So again, I'm gonna ask for a show of hands. How many of you have used the reinvigorate invoice option? All right, guys, anybody out there? Anybody out there? Lots of people Tracy, doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Good, good. Well, I should say lots. We've got to several people that do that. So good, well again, um, if you need to change an invoice and um, it's a, generally a lot quicker and easier and it preserves the paper trail rather than voiding it and then just starting all over again if basically it's just a correction of a, of a dollar amount. All right, paying invoices. Okay, you've worked hard, you've got the invoices out there. We need to start to collect the money or record that the invoices are paid up. So a um, couple of ways to do it. You can go from the main menu, module, invoices, outstanding invoices. It'll then present a, a find window, um, select the invoice. Now note, whoop, there we go. Select the invoice. Um, I'm, let's slow down here. I'm getting too many. Here we go. This is where we are. So you select the in, oh, mouse, come back here. I'm gonna leave my mouse alone here. Okay. 
paying an invoice. Now we're back to where we were. This is selecting an invoice. Now, note, if you're running 91 or older, this find window is the old style find window where you have to tab into the column that you want to search. You start typing. It doesn't display what you're typing. It just tries to find the closest match. Just a note, if you've upgraded to the latest manager, 92 and here forward, we'll use the new style of find where you see the little box up here, just like name and course, type in the value and it'll automatically navigate to that. Okay, now we can move on. So the other option is to select uh, invoices within a date range. So if you say, well, I only want to look at this quarter's worth of invoices, you just put in again 920 or this month's 91 to 930, hit the OK button, and it'll show you just the invoices that fall within that particular time frame. Paying them off. Okay, we found the invoice. Um, number one thing to note is that you can make a payment to multiple invoices. So again, if you've got a company that sends a check to pay for all their invoices, uh, there is a option under module invoices to do pay multiple outstanding invoices, which will present uh, a number of invoices that would match the key criteria you're looking for. And again, you just tick the box to indicate what invoices they might wanna pay. That I think is particularly handy when you have, again, a company that you do a lot of business with and uh, they might be paying for the first uh, one invoice from the summer and one invoice from the fall and they're doing an advance payment on an invoice for a December class. Um, but it allows you to pick and choose multiple invoices without having to kind of go back and loop the loop uh, to get through that. Uh, okay, you've identified what invoice or invoices you want to pay. You then get the pay to invoice screen to open up for you to make a payment. So again, at this point then, you're basically adding a payment with a similar process as you would making a payment from a name record or a registration, you know, or the registration from a course. So that you would, it it would already note uh, on that payment as to what invoices or invoice is going to be paid for. Um, you can click on the view invoice, you can click on the view invoice detail down here, which would take you to then a view of exactly what registrations are included on that invoice. Um, and once you have done that, then you can go in and fill in the rest of the details, however you would make a payment to a regular registration. When you click the Save button, the payment is distributed to all of the registrations in that invoice. And again, you can generate a receipt by clicking the Print Receipt button, which pretty much takes you to then the standard receipt printing uh, routine. Uh, and again, generate whatever, whether it's an email uh, receipt, a printed receipt, uh, generate a confirmation for that, for that payment. Partial payments. Um, and again, one of the benefits of, of, of manager is that when you're applying payments to an invoice uh, and you get somebody who's only making a partial payment, maybe they're contesting one of the registrations. Maybe they're just wanting to pay a certain amount and they say, hey, we can't pay it all. We're gonna just pay you half of it. <clears throat> but when you do that, uh, if ACEWARE student manager notices that the amount that you're paying is less than the total amount of the invoice, it'll ask how you wanna distribute it. And again, so you've got proportional, equally, or specify. <clears throat> so again, um, I don't know that I don't have a particular advice to you as to what works best for you. Uh, I guess in a all else things being equal, um, my recommendation is that if you're paying off a partial invoice 
and you have people and there isn't an issue about Fred is being paid for, but Mary is not, and you're arguing over Mary, that I would do the specify and basically I would try to pay off as many of the individual invoices that make up this group invoice and just leave uh, you know the balance remaining in a in a couple of students rather than having you know a ten dollar payment for each one of fifty students, I would take that what fifty times ten I take that five hundred dollar payment and uh, apply it to you know three of those students who are, have a two hundred and fifty dollar fee or a two hundred and fifty dollar fee so that you pay off three of the students and then you have two of the students that are still showing a full balance of what they owe. It's your call on that, whatever whatever makes sense to you given the circumstance. All right, questions? We got a quiet bunch out there, Sharon. They are a quiet bunch, but you're doing a good yeah, job. Yeah, I think yeah, they're following okay. or they're right. thinking hard, yep. All right, partial payments, again, when you're doing the specify option now, this is the one I said if you wanted to pay off. So again, you've got these um, five students here and they owe all together $1,000 here. Um, well, more than, more than $1,000 here. <clears throat> oh, here it is, amount to distribute, amount distributed remainder. Again, so that the apply button, the apply button, will only go live when you have distributed all of the money. And you'll note up here as you're distributing the money, we've distributed 350, 350, 700. We have 300 left to go. And this is an example of what I said, that if you got a partial payment to apply, what I would do is try to pay off as many full registrations as I can so that you don't have five partial payments across everybody and then five partial payments and five partial payments you know you pay paid in full paid in full paid almost in full and then if they get another uh, seven hundred dollars or whatever it's going to take to pay that off you can just apply the payments to those uh, those individual registrations so again as noted that apply button will not light up it won't be valid for you to use until you have applied all of the funds that you said you're going to be paying at this particular time. Single registration. Now this is if you're paying an invoice, it's a single registration, uh, you can continue to do it through the module invoices option, or you can go to that registration, open up the payment screen and click apply the payment to invoice. Um, so again, uh, and again, you can apply a payment to invoice on a billing, even if it doesn't have an invoice number, because manager will ask you, do you want me to assign an invoice number to that billing? And typically you're gonna say yes, because that's how it balances, that's, that's how it, it, it balances the payment to the invoice and you don't have outstanding invoices. Um, so again, once you've um, once you've started to apply the payment, you basically fill in the the rest of the information as it is. And again, so the idea of uh, here is that you should always use the apply the payment to invoice button when paying a billing with no in, with an invoice when paying a billing with an invoice number assigned. Um, and again, that's a that's a critical element we're going to beat on again. So we talk about wow. Outstanding invoice, is that a good deal? No, you usually don't want an outstanding invoice because you want to be able to log that you are applying a payment to an invoice and that I'm not gonna bug that student anymore because he's gonna be paid up. And how that works is that Aceware uses this paid to invoice box so that when you, when you click apply payment to invoice um, on, that, on that invoice number, it will then drop the paid to invoice number here. And then when you uh, finish the payment, that is how Aceware looks out outstanding invoices. It says, are there invoices uh, that we don't find any payments made to them, so therefore they still need to be paid. We still need to collect on those. 
And again, so if you if you go into a registration that has a invoice and you just apply a payment using the add button, add new payment, even though in student manager on the registration screen, the balance shows as zero, that invoice will not have a, uh, there will not be a paid invoice number on any of the payments and student manager thinks that invoice should still be collected. So uh, again, that's a way for you to, um, I, and one of the benefits of that is that if you've got a partial invoice and a partial payment where a student might be paying part and a company might be paying part, you certainly could have a case where on a $500 class, there's a 375 bill that goes to maybe the company, but J or let's say 375, Jason is gonna pay for that but the 175 is going to be paid by Aceware, and you'd want to be able to apply that payment just to one of the invoices and not to, you know, Jason isn't going to be wanting to be paying for Aceware's part of his registration. That should be done with a company check or payment from Aceware. All right, questions on that. You guys are Ely really, really sharp, or you're taking a nap out there, guys. So, all right. Aging reports, well, moving into reports. All right, we have done the billings, we have invoiced them out, we have generated receipts, we have done some payments. Let's find out who we have that still owes money. So again, in the aging reports area, you can go into reporting, invoicing, aging, and you'll get an aging report set up. So you can enter the date range that you want to review. Um, you can, if you want to specify in addition to the date range, a particular set of course numbers, you may do that. You may also specify to, if you only want to look at that Deadbeat ASOR Systems Group, you could specify a firm in addition to the date range. Um, and again, there is a advanced mode where you can actually exclude certain names from this report. I honestly don't remember, Sharon, what that was in there for, but it was a special case situation. Uh, gives you more flexibility. You get to choose what kind of invoices that you want. Outstanding, which is they owe you. If you've got ones that are overpaid or non-zero balance or all, Again, 99% of the time, you're going to be looking for just your outstanding invoices. Uh, how you might want those, again, those, those listed on your report. And then typically, the aging report is, a user rep is an additional report under the primary report system. <clears throat> and the default report will give you something like this. How many are current? How many are 30 to 61, 61 to 90, over 90? Uh, so that it gives you your your aging setup. Well, what are some other useful billing invoicing reports? And we're wrapping up here. We've just about got a couple slides left. One is, of course, the classic original deadbeat report. Just do deadbeats, the additional report under the one line, one reg deadbeat area. <clears throat> and that'll show you, again, nothing to do with invoices or billings. It basically does the how much is owed, how much is paid, and it shows you the people have balances. Now, there is another report, which was a user report we built for Chris Harvey, former staff member who retired out of a school in Georgia, um, is that if you wanted to find registrations that were have an outstanding balance but you don't care about a balance that has been invoiced, but you wanna know if you're depending on invoices to track who owes money and who doesn't, do you have billings out there or outstanding balances? Maybe you did a refund apart, or maybe you added an additional fee to an existing student, but never ended up invoicing for that fee. It'll give you balances where there has never been an invoice for. So again, that is one, if you don't have that report, reg with outstanding balance and never invoiced, if you don't have that report, contact your tech. 
we'd be able to <clears throat> we'd be able to um, get that report to you. It is in the demo set, so if you download a demo, you'd be able to look at that. Well, folks, I believe that wraps up the base system here. Um, Want to just highlight next month's uh, conference or next month's webinar. Uh, it's right before Thanksgiving. Uh, we've got it. You'll get some information on that in a bit. So, Sharon, where are we at? Who, who's got questions? What's going on? Oh. Okay. So, uh, here's Megan. Megan has a question. And let me see here. It says, let me just read this out. If a student has a credit on their account and you want to apply that credit to an outstanding invoice, is there a way to do that without voiding or canceling the original payment? Hmm, and I think uh, Sharon did answer that, and I think the suggestion was that you can transfer the payment, you can transfer that credit payment to that registration and then manually put the invoice number into the pay to invoice. Um, now, um, Matthew, are you still on? Um, if you've got any other advice or uh, a thought on that? Uh, yeah, actually, I was the one that that. Oh, you were the one that, that did that. Okay, great. Yeah. Okay. Apparently, I'm in as Sharon. Uh, oh, as you're well in on, as well. On, uh, okay. Which might be why she got disconnected, but. Yeah. Um, no, yeah, that's that's the only way I can think of is we we don't have you're any automated tools and yeah, yeah. You just when to... you when you're when you're applying a payment here, let me get over to the system. Um, if you're setting on a registration, Jason Allen, <clears throat> and we get into whoa, I don't want to add a registration. So if we're on a payment and we can apply payment to invoice. Uh, there isn't a again. There are there are no um, escrow pay or um, options on here. Now I'm trying to think. Now if they had escrow, they'd be able to apply a payment from escrow for, if there was one, wouldn't they? Not it, directly I mean, to the invoice. You'd have to add a new payment. You would have to add yes, a new payment on that. So, okay. And then you're still putting the, the paid to invoice number into that. Okay. So or you are I in ad mode. Never mind. You are in ad mode. So yeah, it would. Yeah. You pull would, it up there. It would pull it up in there. So, um, all right. Well, good question, Megan. Um, any other questions in there about invoicing? Are there. Are there those of you that haven't used invoicing much? We've got a couple of minutes here. Are there any routines you want me to kind of review or go over? Uh, we Cheryl had a great set of decks there, but let me just kind of show you again uh, when you're doing uh, generating invoices um, under reports, invoices, run invoices. This is that run new invoices checkbox. Uh, we'll leave this as the default. We hit the OK button, and there would be our set of invoices that are generated. Um, when I close the door, you would be asked, do you want to assign those now? I'm going to say no. Um, now, once you would have assigned invoices and you're now going to pay them off, you could go under module invoices. And again, these are the options, outstanding invoices, outstanding invoices by date range, play multiple outstanding. And so again, this shows all of the outstanding invoices. If Aceware has a check here and they wanted to pay all three of their outstanding invoices at this time, uh, you could just select those together, hit the done button, and those three would be pulled together in a group for you to be able to um, uh, to pay them off. So. That is the invoices to pay. I'm going to abandon out of this. And back to Jason Allen. I think we said that Jason had that invoice we were looking at a minute ago. Jason Allen, editor registration, payment. You know, that one has an invoice. So again, applying a payment to an invoice 
Um, if we were to apply a payment to the invoice, and this is going to be Visa card, and we'd put through our Visa card and save that. Yep, it would then apply the paid invoice on that uh, register on that payment. <clears throat> There's the receipt number, and if we go back and look at the pay info for this registration, you see that here's the billing with this with this invoice number. Here is the payment, and we can see it says pay this amount to this invoice number, and that is your closed loop. So student manager now knows that that invoice is paid off. So if we go back to outstanding invoices and look at it, we should not be seeing we should not be seeing Jason Allen. No, 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 no Jason Allen. All right. Well, I believe we are good. Um, uh, Sharon, I don't know if you're back on. Uh, I am back on. You are back, back on. on. I'll let you kind of wrap it up. Though. Yeah, I want to remind everybody to get that November 19th date on your calendar. We have a great customer showcase and a customer from Oklahoma State University that's going to share how they've been doing their virtual conferencing. They have been using workshops, and they had 37 workshops and 482 attendants at their first virtual event in August, and it went so well, they had another one in October. So come in and uh, look at, listen to a customer success story, and you'll be prepared to run some virtual conferences for yourself. So join us then and hear a customer success story. And with that, we will wish you a good afternoon and a good weekend, and we will see you next month. Be sure to go out and vote, everybody, next week. Have a good evening. Bye-bye. Have a good evening. Bye-bye.